मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स प्लीज एबल टू हियर मी आर नॉट ऑडिबल आर प्लीज स्टॉप टॉकिंग प्लीज सेटल डाउन एबल टू हियर मी आर नॉट नो एम आई ऑडिबल आर नॉट those who are not able to hear me properly raise your hand please settle down now able to hear me or not okay audible or okay. please settle down in the previous class that is yesterday's class we completed the chapter international financial management or foreign exchange management before we started the bond valuation chapter stop talking please before we started the bond valuation chapter i said let us have some brief discussion regarding the concept of time value of money even though a very basic concept that should have been studied at ipcc level we wanted to have a brief summary of what is there in that chapter before we proceeded to this bond valuation and other chapters to follow in which we completed how to find out discounted cash flow for a single cash flow as well as for an annuity today we'll be discussing how to find out discounted cash flow for an annuity immediate mid annuity and then perpetuity multiple and even cash flow all this will be quickly doing in another half an hour's time or 45 minutes time once we complete that today we'll be starting with the next chapter very important very regularly asked in the exam the chapter is bond valuation in which we will try to complete today up to question number 9 that is called as realize yield to maturity concept we will try to complete in today's class as much as possible it will take another minimum 3 to 4 classes to complete the bond valuation chapter and then we'll move on to the equity valuation part we will be starting with the dividend policy next i always tell you the portions ahead which i am going to do in case you have time you can also go through them and then come to the classroom okay now if not at least we know what is going to be done see we saw that rupee 1 received today is not equal to rupee 1 received on a future day today money has got more value than money received in future due to the purchasing power as well as the risk so inflation and then risk makes today's money more valuable than money received in future this is what we refer to as time value of money which is expressed as a percentage which we generally or popularly called as interest rate discount rate etc this percentage has got two components to it namely inflation rate and then risk premium more about the risk premium i said we'll be discussing in that chapter called as portfolio management later so the time value of money says that cash flows received at different points of time should not be added or subtracted as it is all the cash flow should be brought to a common time frame before you do any addition or subtraction you can either bring it to the today's terms or you can take it to a future date if you bring it to today's terms it is called as present value if you take it to a future date it is called as future value present value calculated using a technique called as discounting and future value using a technique called as compounding so the present value of cash flows are popularly called as discounted cash flows and the maturity values are called as compounded cash flows we saw that we'll be discussing four main types of cash flow streams that may happen in any business activity 
it may be a single cash flow or an annuity cash flow or a perpetuity or a multiple and even cash flow single cash flow the cash flow occurs only once after some number of years annuity is same amount occurs repeatedly for finite period n years in case of perpetuity it is an annuity only but a never ending annuity and annuity forever we call it as perpetuity and multiple and even cash flows are different cash flows for different periods we saw example single cash flow is a cumulative fixed deposit can be imagined to be a single cash flow your emi is paid to the bank can be called as an annuity cash flow yeah irredeemable preference as dividend received or a perpetual bond interest received can be imagined to be a perpetual cash flow and all projects obviously for many companies gives you multiple and even cash flows or all different cash flow streams we have seen for all these cash flows we started learning how to find the present value or discounted cash flow single cash flow means a discounted cash flow is cash flow into present value factor a present value factor for 10 percent three years last class we saw as 0.7513 it means one rupee received after three years is equal to 0.7513 today this present value factor we calculated using calculator other method ignore it how we calculate using calculator one divided by 1.10 is equal to three times we just got the present value factor we saw in that discussion also that a 75130 rupees today deposited becomes 1 lakh after how many years 3 years in that assumption is you are reinvesting the interest second assumption is the interest is reinvested back at the same 10% then only that particular present value can be obtained then we discuss about annuity cash flow same cash flow received for n years we call as annuity cash flow for annuity cash flow we multiply the cash flow with the annuity factor annuity factor can be found out in the annuity table or even using the calculator or it is a total of present value factors how to calculate annuity factor for 10 percent 3 years 1 divided by 1.10 is equal to 3 times we press grand total in the calculator i'll be getting the annuity factor i'm just telling you the various tools that can be easily used in the exam without depending on external aid this is how you have to calculate the annuity factor now let us complete two more types of annuities and then we can just go for the next issue perpetuity and multiple and even cash flows now i just want you to have a focus please maintain silence and then listen to the discussion okay today we'll just fix the timing till we are now started at 10 o'clock up to 12:45 we'll be having the first session i'll give you 45 minutes break 130 30 minutes enough huh? <laughs> 45 minutes i'm giving how how long you want to break two hours sir huh? yeah one hour huh? okay now the problem is when i give one hour break you take one hour 15 minutes or one hour 20 to come and settle here right or not then the second session becomes very less here yeah. now i'll say one thing there is no problem in me giving you one hour break but that should be exactly one hour can you do it or not morning at 10 o'clock class people slowly come and settle now that will not be right because in english the word i don't like is break and should i how would i can say so? it causes the disruption in momentum normally at 12:45 we are peaking our discussion then suddenly what a break will come okay now i will give but you should be here on time can you just promise me that or not yes, so we will just start at uh, that is 1:45 12:45 to 1:45 can have a break we'll start here sharply at what 1:45 all of you by that time should have come in here and what settle don't start coming in by 1:45 stay here by what 1:45 did you understand that then 1:45 to 3:15 will be having the class okay. no i'll be exact yeah, correct or okay can i was it no don't talk 4 o'clock onwards tax that starts 4 to 6 class meet announce 4 to 6 first session 6:30 to 8:30 is the second session okay okay now stop talk understand we are the real indians yeah even working on sundays correct or no 
national productivity, no idleness. Can I pass it? No. Can I pass it? No. Anvati immediate, please. Stop talking. In the earlier example, we had a three years annual day, right or not? One, two, and then three. It is one lakh, one lakh, one lakh. This is a normal annual day. Tell me how to read this number. I received three times how much rupees? One lakh rupees. When I received? End of first year, end of second year, end of third year. That is going to be called as normal annuity. We can even call as annuity due. Annuity due. How we write in a shortened format is I write year cash flow. Simply one, two, three years. The cash flow is one lakh. This is called as annuity due. Please settle down. Can I proceed? Now. There are also a number of annuities which starts immediately, not at the end of the period. For example, you pay insurance premium. You pay what? Insurance premium. The first premium is paid at the end of the period as soon as the policy is taken or policy is taken. In that case, insurance premium, whether it is a quarterly premium or a monthly or annual as the case may be, you pay it as an annuity. I don't deny it. But the annuity doesn't start at the end. It starts at the beginning of a given period. Right or not? Such an annuity, we call as what? Annuity immediate. You call as annuity immediate. So it will be like this here and then cash flow. The first to one lakh I get at the end of first year, beginning of the first year, beginning. So it happens in what? Year zero one lakh, year one one lakh, and year two what? One lakh. Here also I get the same three annuities, not unlike the previous one where I get at the year end, but here I get at the year beginning. Please respond. Everybody clarity. Are you following or not? No. How to write this annuity is year and then cash flow. I don't write 1 to 3. I write what? 0 to 2. It is going to be 1 lakh. This is also 3 annuities. 0, 1, 2. This is also what? 3 annuities. But this is 1 to 3. That is 0 to 2. Such an annuity we call as annuity immediate. All this I am not discussing without any intent because in the leasing chapter in capital budgeting we will come across all these annuities while fixation of lease rentals. Can I push it up? No. This annuity we call as annuity immediate. My question is for this 3 lakhs and for this 3 lakhs will the present value be same or will be different? Yes. Which will be having more value? The due or immediate? Because I get cash flow much more earlier. So immediate will be having more value compared to annuity due. So now we are going to learn how to find out the discounted cash flow for an annuity immediate. Can I proceed? No. Let's do it together right now. Next. Example 2 or 3? Three? 3. Example 3. Annuity immediate. Example 3. Annuity immediate. Annuity immediate. Okay, let's write the question first. Year cash flow. I'll just dictate it. Year cash flow. 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2. 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh. Year cash flow 0, 1, 2, 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh. Calculate present value. <coughs> Calculate present value if discount rate is 10 percent. Calculate present value if discount rate is 10 percent. Calculate present value if the discount rate is 10 percent. Can I start or not? Let's do it together. Alternative 1. Alternative 1. Here cash flow present value factor discounted cash flow. Alternative 1. Here cash flow present value factor discounted cash flow. Tell me how many years are there? 3 years. How many 3 years? 0, 1, 2. Here write 0, 1 and then 2. 0, 1 and 2. 
Tell me, what is the cash flow for year 0? 1 lakh. Year 1 also? 1 lakh. Year 2 also? 1 lakh. Year 2 is 1 lakh. My question is, what is the present value factor for year 0? 1. The value of 1 rupee today is what? 1 rupee. So it is going to be 1. Calculate a 10% discount rate na 1 divided by 1.10 is equal to what the number? 0 0.9091. 0 0.9091. Another is equal to in the calculator gives you what? 0 0.8264. 0 0.8264. Discounted cash flow is 1 lakh. 1 lakh. 90,910. 90, and 82,640. 1 lakh 90,910 and 82,640. If I total the last column, I get the discounted cash flow as 2 lakh 73,550. 2 lakh 73,550. 273,550. Shall I proceed? Now, same way how we did in the yesterday's class. Can't I take 1 lakh outside or not? Yes. Write down. Next. Alternative 2. Alternative 2. 1 lakh into 1 discounted cash flow is equal to 1 lakh into 1 plus discounted cash flow is equal to 1 lakh into 1 plus 1 lakh into 0 0.9091 plus 1 lakh into 1 plus 1 lakh into 0 0.9091 plus 1 lakh into 0 0.8264 1 lakh into 0.8264 can't I take the 1 lakh outside? Yes. Which is equal to 1 lakh into 1 lakh into I put the 1 in the end for a comfort as a calculation. 1 lakh into 0 0.9091 plus 0 0.8264 1 lakh into 0 0.9091 plus 0 0.8264 plus 1. Nothing raised. The 1 has been put at the end. Okay. 1 lakh into 0 0.9091 plus 0 0.8264 plus 1. This 1 lakh into 2.7355. 1 lakh into 2.7355. Is equal to 273.550. 1 lakh into 2.7355. Is equal to 273.550. Tell me the 1 lakh is called as what? Cash flow. 1 lakh is called as cash flow. 2.7355 is called as what? Annuity factor. 2.7355 is called as annuity factor. 2 lakh 73 is 550 call as what? Discounted cash flow. Cash flow into annuity factor is equal to discounted cash flow. Cash flow into annuity factor is equal to discounted cash flow. Now, listen here. In the earlier case, last sum we did know. What was annuity factor? 2.4868. Now, respond. Yes or no? Now, what annuity factor? 2.7355. So, now we know there are two annuity factors, normal annuity factor and annuity factor immediate. Right or not? Yes, the question is, sir, how to calculate the annuity factor immediate? Question arises now. It is very simple. Yeah? Now, tell me, how many annuities are there? Three. three annu how many annuities are there? Yeah? Three annuities. In that, find out annuity factor for two annuities. Find out annuity factor for how many annuities? Two annuities. And add one to it. I'll be getting it. Are you following or not? Take the calculator. Please take the calculator. One divided by 1.10. Please, all of you do along with me. One divided by 1.10 is equal to, is equal to how many times here? Two times. Plus grand total. Is equal to, is equal to two times plus what? Grand total. You'll get how much? 1.7355 plus what? 1. Gives you 2.7355. Tell me how to find out annuity immediate. Find out annuity factor for how many annuities? N minus 1 annuities. And then add what? 1 to it. I'll be getting the annuity factor immediate. Please tell me yes or no. Now, I ask a question. I have 10 annuities. How many annuities here? 10 annuities. 1 to 10. I have how many annuities? 10 annuities. 1 to 10. Tell me how to find annuity factor. 1 divided by 1.10 is equal to 10 times. Press what? Grand total. I get the annuity factor. Right or not? Please. I have 0 to 9. How many? How about yeah? 0 to 9. How many annuities are there? 10 annuities. Yeah, correct. Uh, 0 times how many annuities? 10 annuities. In that find out annuity factor for 10 annuities uh, n minus 1 uh, n minus 1. I find out for what? 9 annuities and add 1 to 8 to find out annuity factor immediate. Please tell me yes or no. 
This is how you should be finding out the annuity factor immediate. Write down next. Note. Note. Point number one. When an annuity occurs, when an annuity occurs at the end of every period, when an annuity occurs at the end of every period, when an annuity occurs at the end of every period, it is called it is called a normal annuity. It is called a normal annuity or annuity due. It is called a normal annuity or annuity due. Point number two. When an annuity occurs at the beginning of every period, when an annuity occurs at the beginning of every period, when an annuity occurs at the beginning of every period, it is called when an annuity occurs at the beginning of every period, it is called please tell me it is called it was annuity immediate. It is called annuity immediate. It is called annuity immediate. Which will obviously have which will obviously have it is called annuity immediate which will obviously have which will obviously have more present value which will obviously have more present value than annuity due which will obviously have more present value than annuity due which will obviously have more present value than annuity due shall i proceed up next point number 3 Annuity factor bracket la immediate annuity factor immediate bracket close for n annuities annuity factor immediate for n annuities is equal to annuity factor immediate for n annuities is equal to n annuities means what 3 annuities or 4 etc for n annuities is equal to annuity factor for n minus 1 annuity is equal to annuity factor for n minus 1 annuity annuity factor for n minus 1 annuity plus 1 1 is equal to annuity factor for n minus 1 annuity plus 1 See, I receive 20 annuities. I am receiving what? 20 EMIs or 20 annuities at the beginning of every period. How I find out annuity factor? Annuity factor for 19 annuities plus what? 1 to 8. If I receive at the end of every period, what I will do? Annuity factor for 20 annuities itself. Everybody, are you comfortable or not? No. With this, we have completed this particular area called as annuity immediate. Can I proceed? Just we can have one more calculation that is point number 3 or 4 or 4. In this problem, in this problem, an annuity immediate for three annuities, in this problem, annuity immediate for three annuities at 10 percent, annuity immediate for three annuities at 10 percent is calculated as follows annuity immediate for three annuities at 10 percent is calculated as follows i always tell you the procedure in calculator that's what i'm going to use throughout the session no is calculated as follows that right a type don't laugh at me just saying you to have a comfort type type what one divided by 1.10 a type one divided by 1.10 Number two, press equal to how many times? Two times. By three annuities means n minus one times, no? Press is equal to two times. Plus is equal to two times. Point C is what? Press grand total. Point, point C is press grand total. Anything should I do? Anything further? Yes. Add one. Point A is add one. Press grand total and then add one. Press grand total, add one. 
respond. Everybody comfortable or not? This is how one should find out for annuity immediate. Now, how many types of annuities you have seen? Two types. One is annuity due, and it is what? Annuity immediate. One more annuity type is that let me discuss before I wind up the remaining two. It is called as mid annuity. Give the heading mid annuity. Shall I start or not? See. Here, cash flow. I am given example for mid annuity. Here, cash flow. Okay. In the first example, I got three annuities. One lakh, one lakh, one lakh. When I got end of first year, end of second year, end of third year, I called it as annuity due. Right or not? Next example, I got 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 3 times. When I got beginning of first year, beginning of second year, beginning of third year. Which I call as what? Annually immediate. I wrote as what? 0 to 2. In the parade or not? No. See. I got 3 1 lakh rupees at the end of third year, at the end of fourth year, at the end of fifth year. I got 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh. This is also annuity. Right? This is also what? Annuity only. Annuity does not start at the beginning of this year. Nor it starts what? End of this year. It starts somewhere in the middle. Everybody, yes or no? Now, how you will write it uh, say in the problem here? Year and then cash flow. How you write? Year 3 to 5. It is how much of base? 1 lakh. This annuity we call as what? Mid annuity. Everybody following or not? For this, should I multiply by normal annuity factor? Or annuity factor immediate or mid annuity factor, yeah. mid annuity factor. How to find out? Very simple. Now, the annuity factor for 3 to 5 years is the total of 3rd, 4th, and 50th percent value factor. Right or not? Yeah. Are you all with me or not? Now, what is the annuity factor? Very simple. What annuity factor? Total of percent value factor. Last class we had annuity factor for 2.4869. Yes or no? 1 rupee, 1 rupee, 1 rupee received for 3 years is only how much? 2 rupees, 48 paise. Because first year rupee is 0 0.9091, second year rupee is how much? 0 0.8264, third is what? 0 0.7513. We total the PV factor, so calculate the annuity factor, right or not? In case of 0 to 2, year 0 PV factor is 1, 1 is what? 0 0.9091, 2 is what? 0 0.8264. Simply annuity factor is the total of present value factor, it's all known. Now, 3 to 5 annuity factor is a total of 3rd year, 4th year, 50 year present value factors. Am I right or not? How to find out the 3rd, 4th, 50 year present value factor total? Very simple. Find out the annuity factor for 5 years. And annuity factor for how many years? Yeah? 5 years. It gives you total of 5 years present value factor. Right or not? Find out the annuity factor for 2 years. It gives you total of what? 2 years present value factor. 5 years annuity factor minus what? 2 years annuity factor gives you what? Annuity factor for 3rd to 5th year. In the clarity. That's what I calculate the annuity for? In, uh, that is uh, mid annuity. Can I proceed or not? Write down. Now, have you finished copying this? Uh? Write down. What has been dictated? Mid annuity. Write down. Example. Year cash flow. Example. Year cash flow. 3, 4, 5, year cash flow, year 3, year 4, year 5. What is the cash flow? 1 lakh, 1 lakh and 1 lakh. 3, 4, 5, 1 lakh, 1 lakh and then 1 lakh. Calculate present value. Calculate present value if the discount rate is 10%. Calculate present value if the discount rate is 10 percent. Okay. Let us write a solution. We will do it in one shot. Solution. Year cash flow annuity factor at 10 percent discount at cash flow. Year cash flow annuity factor at 10 percent discount at cash flow. This annuity factor is normal annuity factor, immediate annuity factor, mid annuity factor, mid annuity factor. Here right place 3 to 5. Here is 3 to 5. Cash flow is 1 lakh. Here 3 to 5, cash flow is 1 lakh. 
Now I should find out mid annuity factor or not? No. Right, working note. Mid annuity factor. Right, working note. Mid annuity factor. Okay. How to find a mid annuity factor? First, write annuity factor 10%. How many years? 5 years. Annuity factor 10%, 5 years. I have not provided any table for you in the workbook. I want you to calculate and tell me every number. Okay, annuity factor 10%, 5 years. How do it? 1 divided by 1.10 is equal to, is equal to, is equal to, is equal to 5 times. Press 1, grand total. Tell me the number here. What is the number? 1%? 3.7908. Number correct? No. Next is what? Annuity factor. What person? 10 person. How many years? 2 years. Now don't include 3. Just stop with one number before that. Annuity factor 10 person, 2 years. 1 divided by 1.10 is equal to 2 times. Grand total already found out. 1.7355 is 1.7355. Then I just reduce it. I get annuity factor for 10 percent. What to what? 3 to 5 years. Tell me what is the number here? 2.0? 0? 5, 5, 3. Okay. 2.0553. I'll write it here. 2.0553. 2.0553. 1 lakh into 2.0553 gives you 2 lakhs 5530. 2 lakhs 5530. 205, 530. 2 lakhs 5530. This is how one should calculate the mid annuity factor. Respond, yes or no? Write down, note. Point number one annuity factor. Annuity factor for M minus for M to N years. Sorry, annuity factors for M to N years. Annuity annuity factor for M to N years. Annuity annuity factor for M to N years. Annuity is called annuity factor for m to n years annuity is called is called what factor mid annuity factor annuity factor for m to n years annuity is called mid annuity factor full stop point number 2 mid annuity factor for m to n years is mid annuity factor for m to n years is Annuity factor for fill out the blanks. Annuity factor for n years is annuity factor for n years minus is annuity factor for n years minus fill out the blanks. Annuity factor for m minus one years. Annuity factor for n years minus annuity factor for m minus one years. Annuity factor for n years minus annuity factor for m minus one years. Respond, are you following or not? No. Please, don't try, tell me. I want to know the annuity factor for 27th to 63rd year. How to find out? Annuity factor for 63 years minus annuity factor for 26 years. 27 to 63 years. How to find out? Annuity factor for 63 years minus annuity factor for 26 years. Gives you from 27 to 63. Respond, are you following or not? With this, we have completed this particular concept called as mid annuity. Tell me, how many cash flow streams you have seen? Single cash flow. Where use what factor? Present value factor. Number two is what? Annuity cash flow. We having three subdivisions, namely normal annuity, annuity immediate, as well as mid annuity. All these cash flow patterns we have discussed. Everybody, are you following or not? Now, the next issue is present value of a perpetuity. Present value of what? Perpetuity. Now, example three or four or five or six or Numbers only example five. Example five. Present value of perpetuity. Example five. This shall be known to you, but still very important because equity valuation, mergers and acquisitions in all these chapters. 
generally I use only perpetuity because shad is a perpetual instrument. I don't know. So for value, use a perpetuity. There's another thing called as growing perpetuity, which we'll be discussing today in the share valuation concept later. Can I say it? Present value of a perpetuity. Please. Write the example, year 1 to infinity, infinity means what? Forever, that's the meaning, 1 to infinity, cash flow 1 lakh, interest 10%. 1 to infinity, cash flow 1 lakh, interest 10%. 1 to infinity, cash flow 1 lakh and interest 10%. Okay. Now. This is very easy to calculate. Mathematically also can be understood. But let us see logically how to understand the perpetual present value. And then we can just complete in one second. Can I proceed? How to calculate present value of perpetuity? Easiest calculation. Can I proceed? Now, see. Suppose I promise to give you. Always I use the word what? Suppose. I Suppose the, the promise comes within suppose. Okay. Suppose I promise to give you 1 lakh till you live. I promise to give you what? 1 lakh till you live. It is what promise? Perpetual promise. Yes or no? As long as you live, I am going to what promise to give you. We all think we are Mark and Daya. Right or not? So in that case, I promise to give you 1 lakh as long as you live. That means I give you 1 lakh for 1 year, 2 years, 10 years, forever, forever. Because I don't know when it is going to end. Are you following not? Yesterday, yesterday I said, perpetual means uh, it is not that uh, there is no ending. I say what? There is no knowledge about the ending period which we call as a perpetuity. Can I proceed or not? Now. I promise to give you 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh for how many years here? Till you live. That is forever I promise to give you 1 lakh rupees. Now, I ask you a question. Do you want 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh forever or you require a lump sum amount today? What answer? <laughs> you want what? A lump sum amount today. I expected that answer. Okay, tell me how much you want today? Instead of 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh forward, for infinite years giving 1 lakh, in that place ask me a lump sum amount today, no? how much you'll ask me, tell me. How much rupees? Hello, bro? No, yeah. Why can't there a number? Okay. Don't ask 30 gross. No, 30 gross, why? Yeah, 1 lakh, okay. Now, can you even ask me 1 lakh 76,000 crores? Hello, bro? But I cannot give it because I am not Raja, no? I am Raja Gopal. I don't know how I have to be asking what? Something logically, right? Now, see, you should ask me a lump sum amount today, but what you ask me is very abnormal. Somebody said 1 crore, okay, I have a Somebody said 30 crores, these are all not acceptable. I won't give you, okay, now, see. Listen, 50. Yeah, auction only, okay. But the one crore, I don't say 50 lakhs or 30 crores, okay. Now, listen. Listen here. Yeah. I will say, one lakh, one lakh, one lakh, one lakh forever, it is equal to giving you 10 lakhs today. Instead of getting one lakh for infinite years, if I give you what? 10 lakhs today, both are same, I say. Accept that. Yes, you may not agree. Sir, even if I get for 20 years this 1 lakh, I'll be getting how much rupees? 20 lakhs. If I leave for 30 years, I'll be getting what? 30 lakhs. How can you say that infinity years 1 lakh is just what? 10 lakhs today. Question arises yes, no. Now, I'll tell you how I got 10 lakhs. 1 lakh divided by 10 percent. Cash flow is what? 1 lakh. And rate is what? 10 percent. Cash flow by R, 1 lakh divided by 10 percent. Give me what? 10 lakhs. I'll tell you why the 10 lakh today is as good as 1 lakh forever. Very simple. You take the 10 lakh today and invest in a perpetual bond or invest in an irredeemable preference share, giving you 10 percent coupon. Are you following not? Now, if I take that 1 lakh and invest in a deposit or a perpetual bond, giving you how much percent go up? 10%. Then every year you'll be getting 1 lakh forever or not? Yes, sir. Yeah, correct, huh? That means that 1 lakh today is, that 10 lakhs today is capable of generating you how much? 1 lakh, 1 lakh, 1 lakh forever. That is why 10 lakh today is equal to what? 1 lakh forever. Respond. Point number 1. Accept it, huh? Yes, sir. 
Please respond. Yes or no? Yes, How I got it here? Yeah? It is 1 lakh divided by 10%. Cash flow divided by R. Ah. But some may think, sir, the second deal is good. You give me 10 lakh today. That means I invest in what? The perpetual bond for how much of base? Yeah? 10 lakhs. I invest. Or I invest in FD forever for what? 10, 10 lakhs. I'll be getting 1 lakh, 1 lakh. Then you say, sir, I am getting 1 lakh also every year. I am also having 10 lakhs. Correct? Yeah, correct huh? Sir, because if I give you 10 lakh today, you invest in 10 lakh or not? So every, how much you get interest? 1 lakh. Sir, I am getting 1 lakh also. I am also having what? 10 lakh. The second is more attractive. True or false? False. Because you are not having the 1 lakh. The 1 lakh is with the company whose bond has been issued. Yes or no? Don't say it is my 1 lakh only. If you get back that 1 lakh, if you get back that 10 lakhs, that 1 lakh coupon will stop. Are you falling? Huh? You cannot enjoy the principal as well as what? Interest. Simply I say, I give you 10 lakh today, you invest the 10 lakh in a bank. For how much percent interest? 10 percent interest. You may think that I am having 10 lakh, I am also earning what? 1 lakh. Not so, because if you withdraw the 10 lakh, the 1 lakh will stop. If you want the 1 lakh, the 10 lakh is not with you. Everybody, are you following not? In that case, the 1 lakh forever is equal to what? 10 lakhs today. That are you convinced or not? Can I proceed further? In that case, very simple. Perpetuity alone, discounted cash flow is equal to cash flow divided by R. What is cash flow? 1 lakh. Divided by 10% is equal to 10 lakh. That is how most of the equity instruments are valued. We will be discussing it in the share valuation later. Right on. Solution. Discounted cash flow is equal to discounted cash flow is equal to cash flow divided by R. Discounted cash flow is equal to cash flow divided by R, which is equal to 1 lakh divided by 10 percent, which is equal to 1 lakh divided by 10 percent, is equal to 10 lakhs. 1 lakh divided by 10 percent is equal to 10 lakhs. Can I proceed or not? Tell me. For a perpetual cash flow, the discounted cash flow is equal to what? Cash flow divided by R. Can I pass it? Last example. Example 3 or 4? Example 6. Okay. Multiple and even cash flow. Example 6. Multiple and even cash flow. Nothing great. Just to conclude, you are doing it. That's all. Multiple and even cash flow. Multiple and even cash flow. Year cash flow. Year cash flow 1, 2, 3, 1 lakh, 4 lakh, 3 lakhs. Year cash flow 1, 2, 3, 1 lakh, 4 lakh, 3 lakhs. Interest 10 percent. 1 lakh, 4 lakh, 3 lakhs. Interest 10 percent. Calculate present value. Interest 10 percent. Calculate present value. Nothing great deal by the solution. Year, cash flow, present value factor, discounted cash flow. Year, cash flow, present value factor, discounted cash flow. 1, 2, 3. Year 1, 2 and then 3. Cash flow is 1 lakh, 4 lakhs, 3 lakhs. Cash flow is 1 lakh, 4 lakh, 3 lakhs. Present value factor of our first year is 1.9091. 1 divided by 1.10 is equal to 0.9091. Another is equal to 0 0.8264. 0 0.8264. Another is equal to 0 0.7513. Another is equal to 0 0.7513. 1 lakh into 0 0.9091, 90,910. 4 lakhs into 0 0.8264, 3 lakh 30,560, 3 lakh 30,560, 3 lakhs into 0 0.7513 gives you 2 lakh 25,390, 2 lakh 25,390. Can I add the first, second column? No. Can I add the last column? Yes. The total of the last column is 6 lakh 46,860, 6 lakh 46,860, 646,860. To put it simply, getting 1 lakh, 4 lakh, 3 lakhs. At the end of what? 
first year, second year, third year. He is not equal to receiving 8 lakhs today. He is equal to receiving just what? 6 lakhs, 46,860 today. What this can mature at the end of the third year? These three also can mature at the end of the third year with the same amount. He is the meaning of this. Everybody, are you following or not? No. Single cash flow. Discounted cash flow is equal to what into what? Cash flow into present value factor. Annuity cash flow normal. Discounted cash flow is equal to what? Cash flow into annuity factor normal. Annuity factor immediate. Annuity cash flow immediate. What is the formula? Cash flow into annuity factor immediate. How to find out annuity factor immediate for n annuities? Find out annuity factor for n minus 1 annuities and add 1 to 8. Present value of a mid annuity between M to N years. How to minus annuity factor? N years annuity factor minus M minus 1 annuity factor. And how to find out present value of a perpetual cash flow? Discounted cash flow is equal to cash flow by R. As simple as that. How to find a cash flow for discounted cash flow multiple and even? Respective years cash flow by respective years. Present value factors. Each one is a summary discussion we had in the time value of money till now. Everybody following or not? No. See. There are so many other issues that is also normally discussed at IPC somewhere in the time value of money. You may have discussed about how to calculate an annuity EMI given the rates of interest and others. How to calculate rate of return or IRR for a given cash flow stream. How to compound non-annually that is semi-annual quarterly. So many issues have been discussed. I don't want to discuss everything in one shot. I just wanted you to get into my mode regarding what? The time value of money. At appropriate stages, wherever the discussion requires, I will not assume that you know in the IPCC level. I'll be discussing the appropriate point and then including it in the chapters as it may come across. Can I proceed or not? No. With this, we had a small introduction or a brief introduction to this chapter called as time value of money.